the sixth day of September 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight. I'm Dana Durnford. I'm also known as the nuclear proctologist. Owner. We're here to hopefully get you educated or up to speed on the current nuclear disaster known as Fukushima's nuclear meltdown. And uh, tonight, we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to take you back to 2011. And there's some unique pictures that came out two years ago. It was uh, over 700 pictures from the drone. And these pictures had um, quite the surprise attached to them. Was that when you zoomed in on the picture, because these were very high quality pictures, you noticed that uh, large parts of the reactors and surrounding areas were pixelated out. Were pixelated out. Don't worry, I'll get there. So in the bottom part of your screen, you're looking at, this is reactor three in that mess, reactor two and reactor one is up there. Um, you can see the detonation. This is a behind reactor three on the hill, the administration's office. And I'm also going to take you back to some of the headlines from that period. International Atomic Energy Agency was informed in March that the number one reactor core started melting down 50 minutes after it lost power. It needs a million gallons a minute, so it it can fill up all the tanks currently on site in six times a day, every four hours, a single reactor, because you need a million gallons a minute, 4,500 tons a minute. Uh, another headline is impossible. The bulk of the melted fuel is in unit one containment. It's impossible. So you had the confirmation unit one started melting down 50 minutes after the tsunami because he lost power for 1,200 miles. The coastline was torn out to sea. So there was no functional phone poles, power, extension cords. Impossible to bulk of the melted fuel is in the MR1 containment. Charred vessel could indicate explosive event inside. And as you started to look at the pictures, because I was, it was originally you're zoomed out and you have to zoom in. So I'm going to change the format to what we are right now. And I can zoom in from this particular format. So I'll be staying pretty well like this and that. So uh, to the top up there is the pump house. That's towards the seas that way. I'll try to keep you oriented. And this was reactor 2 PI and reactor 2 and uh, reactor three, which was the mix oxide fuel facility. And I also need some pictures for you so you can see what they look like later. So these pictures were magically released in uh, the 11th anniversary, 10th anniversary was 2021 in January of that year. Bring you up some pictures now, give you some context in a moment. And we start off with the original pictures. So that was that's reactor three. The picture you're looking at is from the other side of it. That's reactor four. And behind that was the common spent fuel pool. And so here's where you're not zoomed in. And so it's very difficult to appreciate that once you zoom in, everything is pixelated. But that's the way it was in all these pictures. Nuclear engineers proved the fuel fragments were sneezed out of the Unit 1 Fukushima reactor into the torus. That's not a meltdown, that's a detonation of the reactor core itself and the fuel pools. And number one, they were at 225 sievers per hour on March the 30th. Highest radiation doses measured because Geiger counters can't generally survive. Any electronics can't survive that number. 
So they're extrapolating the number from data, and that will kill most of the typical uh, Geiger, so-called Geiger counters that would have been permanently stationed in that area by people that would have died shortly after. 230,000 becquels per square meter of cesium on an athlete's field in Koto, which is Tokyo, six times as high as the radiation control limits. So you should have abandoned Tokyo. And there's an absurd amount of documentation about this. This is the pumping facilities, and that's more of it up there. You can see the debris piled up. You can see the debris piled up in the top part of it. Let me bring it to you. You see the tangled. Now remember, these back in them days, digital wasn't super high quality 12 years ago. This is one of the very few pictures that wasn't pixelated. This is the seaward side of reactor four. It's a total destruction. And to give you context of the reactor four, they stripped it down with more control machines and, and they should have just level it all the way to the ground. There is nothing left. But they wanted to leave it there so they can pretend that it looked like that up there. And this disgusting creature, who I've mentioned at least uh, 300 times a year, is Ernie Gunnarsson, and he made the racks for the assemblies. He, he's never said anything honest. He's a very dishonest person. But a lot of people are promoting him, and I don't tolerate it around here. Ernie made the racks for the assemblies for the fuel pools were at the top of the building. So if Ernie don't know they're gone, then nobody would. So he's a confirmed genocide machine for the industry. Up to a million sievers per hour outside the Fukushima Unit 1 containment vessel. A million sievers is a lethal dose uh, with anywhere within sight. If you can see it, you're getting an incredible gamma shines, x-rays, neutron bombardments, beta rays, etc., etc. You're in danger. This is reactor three, reactor two would be right over there. Everything is pixelated above it. So this footage wasn't, it was released to a Japanese, showed up in the Japanese media. And uh, I was trans, I have a habit of translating heads, headlines about Fukushima and see what I can figure out. And this story uh, had links to over 740 pictures that had just been released. And so I downloaded them before I even finished the story. <coughs> So currently, I'm the only person on the entire planet that has showed you these videos or these pictures in the video. China, China had the pictures linked to TEPCO's website where I downloaded it. And there's not really an explanation of who released it and why they released it. But on the 10th anniversary, they released over 700 pictures that were pixelated, which wasn't the norm, see? And so what were they hiding? and they are good at hiding stuff. And so this is a serious event. Now they're claiming only 2.2 grams got out of the buildings. And I'll just take people back because we've been doing this for about six weeks straight. And the government hid the radiation simulation it was very, very bad, the Japan professor, and showed a serious contamination over a very wide area. So let me explain what that actually means. Uh, so this is United Nations UNSCLEAR report in the first year and population. Uh, the first one is the community. The second row is population. The third row is just cesium-137 only. There's a thousand other isotopes that are going to be in the same samples. And so in order to manipulate the population of the planet for 80 years, um, the majority of the studies will only acknowledge cesium-137, but the reactors actually run on plutonium, uranium, and it's a very slippery slope when you do something like that. 
The United Nations, of course, is backing the assertions that only 2.2 grams of tritium got into the buildings. But here they are with studies showing cesium everywhere. And I mean everywhere. So 39,000 in the Zubang town uh, should be abandoned. The 17,918 souls should be abandoning that community because these are extraordinary numbers per um, square meter. Think of it as your kitchen table or something, or where a child stands up to wait for the bus. On the same anniversary as those pictures, the United Nations came out and claimed there was no adverse health effects. And yet to show you a picture of people, all these communities, there's lots of communities abandoned, but no adverse health conditions. And all of these communities should be abandoned. Fukushima City, with a population of 300,000 people, and every house uh, met the, the standards for decommissioning. You can't decommission, aka decontaminate a structure. You have to s the section it off for a million years from the environment. 229,000 beckles of just cesium. There's going to be about 100 times more strontium-90 in the same samples uh, within a thousand days, strontium-90 peaks, and stays peaked for tens of thousands of days. We're at, we're around 4,600 days in. So these samples were before the peak, so there would have been equal strontium-90 per se. But the United Nations said there was no adverse effects that same year, yet, um, let me get to the next communities. The next self a bit. Okay, so Kori Yama City, 340,000 people got 162,000 beckles, which is physical atoms pulsing a second per square meter. Think of it as forever, long past any life's experience on the planet. This stuff will still be pulsing energy, stopping anything from being able to live here permanently. So United Nations got the numbers from all these towns now claim that that didn't happen and it don't exist. And in 2021 uh, claimed there was no adverse side effects. But the, the side effects are fairly well known. Uh, again, um, science doesn't seem to matter. So here's their official numbers they now claim doesn't exist anymore. and claiming that radiation did not damage the health of the local people, despite the fact, how can you not? These are 55, say. So if you got rid of the 37,500 and got 54, that's basically an evacuation zone pre-Fukushima pulse event that jeopardized the entire planet. So this is uh, reactor two. You can see it's remo uh, releasing what, what, because you need certain conditions to be able to see the emissions, right? And see up, everything is pixelated. So, and this is reactor one. Uh, this is shortly after, this was a, a, a very high up in the air drone. When you zoomed in, you discovered everything was pixelated and pixelated heavily, including the stacks that are norm normally, are normally, um, releasing the atoms from the fuel pools, which are splitting atoms. Everything in the fuel pools are splitting atoms, the same amount as it would to boil for millions of homes of atoms. Now there's no containment, and that's why the majority of nuclear power plants are surrounded up by farms. Up there is the common spent fuel pool, which is on the same ground level. And we strongly believe that could not have survived. And when you see everything pixelated from the original pictures, released from Japan on the 10th anniversary in 2021, with no explanations from a Chinese site. Uh, but when you look at the pictures and zoom in on it, to your absolute horror, the common spent fuel pool is also pixelated out. There's no reason to do that unless there was an event there. And they would have had around 10 million pounds, but because you don't have a repository for the fuel, everything was kept on site which means they would have had way more than their normal capacity, which is the standard for these boiling water reactors worldwide. They all seem to have that particular attribute. 
Radiation forecast in Japan kept secret, which now we see come to fruition where they claim not in Gare with only tritium, but it's in a thousand tanks. Now, if you go to my playlist, you'll see incredibly detailed presentations on that, where I show you all the information. Um, there's no opinions, no conjectures, just documentation. <coughs> My apologies, I've got to cut that throat with a bit of hot tea. Radiation forecast in Japan kept secret to avoid panic in the whole of society, and rightly so. Now we see why, see? This is a common spent fuel pool. Why is that pixelated out oh, completely? Look in the top of it, you'll see... Uh, containers from transport trucks stacked up where the tidal wave pushed it all up in the corner. U.S. media only mentioned reports about melt through at reactor one, not at reactor two and reactor three. Uh, a new simulation shows a brief when the melted rods may have seeped deeper into the floor of the, the within a foot of breaching the critical. Well, no, it breached it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to pixelate everything. And it was the same for a common spent fuel pool. Again, once you lose cooling, they melt down after about 50 minutes. If reactor one melted down in 50 minutes, so did reactor two and three, period. Official Japan's government withheld the radiation forecast that the, the taxpayer paid for that, right? They paid to train the people, they trade to give them pensions, they paid rather they gave them the authority, the monetary, the equipment to, to find it if there was an event. When you finally had a major event, they stabbed you in the back. They cut your throat and left you for dead. And that's what's happening to your friends and families and your loved ones. To the one group that was job, whole job was to find that event and give you a chance to get out of harm's way. And after decades and decades and decades of massive money thrown at them to upgrade their equipment, when it finally happens, they stab you to death with radiation. So the common spent fuel pools had a meltdown, same as these, and that's why they're equally pixelated. But why is it even worse pixelation? The entire facility, every facet of that facility is pixelated. Why, why is all of it pixelated, every inch of it? And you can see those uh, containers from transport trucks stacked up in the background. That's where the tsunami pushed everything. So if the tsunami pushed everything way up there, and it did, then it's appropriate to suggest that it went right through the building because the buildings are not waterproof or bulletproof. And the tsunami came in at 400 miles per hour it slowed down dramatically as it came ashore, but it still had that enormous, ridiculous, and maybe I can find you a picture of the tsunami coming into the power plant itself. I'm not always perfect, but I might be able to wrangle something together because I'm foolish enough to keep going till I do. And then what did the tsunami look like is another thing you got to remember. And don't forget, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags at the Amito. Hang on, though. Let me see if I can find a picture of the tsunami coming through the site. Because this uh, video is about making sure that everybody's on the right page when we have that conversation. I think we're close. There we are, right there. So this picture does a great job. It gives you different depictions of the tsunami running through the site. So the bottom, number five and six, to the right-hand bottom, you can see the tsunami running through the site itself. And that shouldn't leave you with any questions once you see something like that. And so take into consideration the reactors threw fuel rods all over the site, that there was four meltdowns and eight fuel pools lost. And we know that from many different ways, another way is the heat signature. And just let me play the original video broadcast official, and you can hear 
the voice of the narrator who's translating it, the president's or the prime minister's Khan's voice in real time, articulate, you can hear that just a horror in, in that poor lady's voice. Japanese Prime Minister appeared on TV to put into play a plan they'd rehearsed for years. We will secure the safety of the people of Japan and in order to minimize the damage, the government will make every effort possible. And we ask the people of Japan to continue to be cautious and vigilant and keep tuned in to the reports on the television and radio and we ask the people of Japan to act calmly. You can hear her, she's literally, she's literally tore apart. So the red dot uh, squares are people that are missing and the yellow is, are dead and the yellow are people that are missing. And this is around 1,200 kilometers of the coastline. So, you, and what we're talking about is an actual wood chipper. So there's no telephone poles, there's no infrastructure, there's no way even bulldozers can't make their way to the site. And the site has suffered the same fate. The explosion of Reactor 3 was felt 25 miles away. And the first calls came out was send us people who don't mind dying. Do you think it was really tritium that they were concerned about? So up in the top is reactor four is the closest one to you. And the common spent fuel pool is up in the top right hand corner. But there there was an incinerator here also. All nuclear power plants have incinerators. Uh, 30 times more strontium-90 than cesium at Fukushima. And strontium is a bone seeker, particularly for children and insects and birds and mammals and animals. It sequesters in their bones, among other places, and mutates the stem cells if they're in the bone. And so for any child or animal, young uh, animals or, or hatchlings or new birds or animals, this is really bad because your your stem cells are you know developing your whole body and so are your thyroid and your pituitary glands and they're being saturated so you're producing all these radioactive hormones and you have um, mutated stem cells or worse and so that's why a lot of kids will get chemotherapy at these young ages which because they're producing so much white blood cells from the radiation poisoning they don't have any oxygen or nutrition in the red blood cells. And so this stack is also, is not just reactor for, this is for the incinerator, because they burn radiation on the site at all nuclear power plants. So reactor four and, rea and the common spin fuel pool. Uh, these are stunning pictures you're never gonna see anywhere else. 100 million becquels per cubic centimeter radioactivity estimated for Fukushima sludge per cubic centimeter, cubic centimeter. So why are we talking about tritium today? Because that's the cover story. And this is a very, very, very dangerous thing to do is downplay this kind of event. This is pertinent for the rest of humanity and the 8 million species limited existence due to 80 years of these emissions. 19.8 microsieverts per hour in Tokyo air on November the 15th. 19.8 microsieverts per hour. These are catastrophic numbers. That was actually 180 times uh, peak uh, nuclear weapons fallout nearly 200 times the normal levels, incineration of radioactive debris suspected. No, this was ongoing perpetual releases from this site. 
Why was everything pixelated? What are they hiding if they got nothing to hide? Why were they released on the 10th anniversary? Well, January of that year. Was that a warning, I wonder? Spent fuel pool in number four damaged and leaking fast. March the 17th. Well, the spent fuel pool was gone on March the 17th of number four. And number three, like, I'm using them as examples because when you look up the picture, say, of number three, it's clear the spent fuel pooch was at the top of the building was gone. That's unassailable. It's incontestable. And here's reactor four, the original footage of reactor four. That's gone, see? And that's, that's why they... They leveled it. Now, the fuel pools, just to make sure you appreciate the fuel pools, are at the very top of the building. They're stuffed with fuel past your capacity, normal capacity, which is considered acceptable because you don't have a repository in Japan or anywhere else worldwide. And that stump remaining should have been leveled. So they decided that they were going to hoodwink you. And what they decided to do was they built a contraption off-site and they assembled it alongside of the remains. Look how, that, does that look 180 feet tall to anybody? So they got that contraption and they built it up and over it and then claimed, and these are the official pictures of what they said it looked like inside of the remains of that. I got much more detail, but that's um, right here. So you see the framing right here, right there. So when that frame was complete, it looks like this here. And so the other picture is from the other side looking towards me. So they put this contraption on the remains of the left, right? They cleaned it up till it looked like that. They should have just flattened it to the ground. But they wanted to manipulate, so they done that. And then came out and claimed they were in a building. Now I put her, Arnie Gunnison, who I play endless times. There's no, anybody that's here regular don't have an excuse to call him a good man. He's not a good person. The division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. So how could he not know the fuel pools are gone, right? He, he can't, see? And then, I'm not sure, I believe this is reactor one, a uh, reactor two and reactor one up here, and that would be reactor three right there, I believe. Danger reading in Tokyo, radiation air levels that trigger evacuation, 17 times the recommended limited. More contaminated areas in the exclusion zone of Chernobyl is what they're talking about. So why is everything pixelated? This is seaside behind me that way. These buildings... Now, they talk about hydrogen explosion, and that's caused by the release of the reactor core out of the containment. Japan confirms full meltdown at all three reactors, June the 6th, 2011. And that's why they got that pixelated. They were trying to hide it originally. And so I don't understand why they released these pictures. It must have been a lawsuit or freedom of information or something that forced them to release the pictures because they were known about and, and and they can quantify that they existed. So if that's reactor one, why are they hiding this part over here? Because the reactors go that way. So what are they hiding over right there? Tokyo samples had radioactivity levels higher than Chernobyl. And when you look at uh, 2013, that reactor four and reactor three should have been scuttled right to the ground. There is nothing remaining. But what they decided to do was use the stumps, cover them up, and claim that the reactors were intact. 
And so I showed you reactor four. Let me show you one picture of what they've done in reactor three. Now it doesn't physically touch reactor three because you can't, right? It's destroyed. But the idea was to manipulate you into believing, and I'll show you the actual, some actual stories and pictures that were released. Removal of the pull, the melted reactor begins, which they're claiming is reactor three. And here's a more detailed picture. That's what they're claiming is actually reactor three. That's the official pictures that came out in the media in a pretty organized worldwide campaign. So they're claiming this is reactor three, the fuel pool is at the top of it, but obviously reactor three doesn't even exist or the fuel pools. So you, it's a pretty dangerous precedence that they got away with. And because they got away with it, we don't know what he's holding to account. Now they become even more hateful and vicious and dangerous. I think danger is the key word. You're in real danger. You're not immune and you can't escape it. So you better start dealing with it. It's time to gut up. Time to do the right thing. It's time to be honest and sincere and genuine. And it's time to, this is the earth's last stand. We are also documenting the marine die-offs and the insect die-offs. And so there's 1,800 diseases from radiation fallout. There's heart problems, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, and particularly Alzheimer's, dementia, autism. You've seen that skyrocketing, and that's what we would expect. And, you know, after nuclear accidents, the first thing that the academics are going to receive large grants is to study Down syndrome and autism. And so this is the common spin fuel pool. That's reactor four, and it goes all the way down to reactor one. Radiation forecast can by no means be released to the public. Decided the government on March the 15th and showed a radioactive cloud could spread over Tokyo. Uh, this is stunning that the common spent fuel pool, which is at the exact same height as the other reactors, is completely pixelated. And they had uh, reactor cores from all six reactors. And I'm going to get to them, reactor five and six. Reactor six was pixelated too, which is quite a ways away from one, two, three, and four. Again, the common spent fuel pool is so important because they denied there was any issues, but obviously why would you pixelate it if there's no issues? 220 million becquels a liter of just cesium gamma, you know, what about the alphas, betas, the neutrons? Now in number two spent fuel pool. Uh, August 28, 2011, the number two spent fuel pool didn't exist. Number one, two, three, or four didn't exist at that stage. They were gone on the 16th of March, by day six, uh, March the 16th. The accident happened March the 11th. So in five days, those buildings were gone. And reactor four, reactor three, reactor two, reactor one, why is all that pixelated out? And, but you have to zoom in to appreciate it. You won't see that from the original pictures. Tokyo drinking water is unsafe. If it's unsafe once, that's permanent. That's forever. You should have abandoned 36 million people. That would have been the death of nuclear worldwide instantly, right? So they decided rather than them die, they'll just let all of you die by continuing to perpetrate the crimes against you and proliferate the radioactive products from the nuclear wasteland, where originally 14 prefectures entire prefectures of everything, rice, uh, peaches, you name it, were banned by 55 countries. Not Canada, because Canada's not an actual country. Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days in July the 13th, I believe it was. It was 93 days after, and so the world couldn't, Japan couldn't ship radioactive a billion pounds just from Fukushima each year, rice, anywhere, only to Canada. And not counting everything else they grow there, right? Asparagus, tomatoes, strawberries, 
It's a whole, it's a great big disaster. They poisoned Canada. Broken pieces, nuclear fuel rods found outside of number two, says nuclear ex executive, and was covered up by bulldozer outside of reactor two, which would have been in that pixelated area right there somewhere. Speculation, supercritical fission event occurred at Fukushima reactors radiating plutonium, says a nuclear expert. And the explosion was so massive, investigators found fuel rod fragments a mile away. No, all the reactors were destroyed right away. But reactor three and four, and number three in particular, was is very easy to comprehend that that's not 190 feet tall. It's very easy to comp uh, comprehend that that's only a stump, and that the only thing you can do with it is level it to the ground because there is nothing left. It was completely ejected from the reactor. The fuel pools and the reactor core sections are gone. And they went, as I showed you pictures earlier of the explosion, extraordinarily high in the air. Rapid meltdown happened at reactor number two and three, which was a mixed oxide fuel reactor. This fuel shouldn't exist. Most countries banned it. It's reclaimed uranium and plutonium, and this is lethal by the atom. It, it might take 20, 30, 40 years to get you, but it'll get you or birds or mammals or animals or anything else that are unfortunate enough to come in contact. So even reactor two and three was the black smoke coming out of reactor two. That's reactor two. Nuclear chain reaction may have lasted over seven months, still going on. Max fuel could be the neutron source. Well, there's neutron source in each of the buildings and the fuel pools, all eight fuel pools that are missing, there was a neutron source. So there was cores ejected. Because when you're looking back at this angle, everything looks pretty like a normal picture. But once you zoom in on it, then you start realizing everything is pixelated, right? Why is everything so pixelated? And the enormous amount of damage and, and stuff strewed way out of the tsunami zone itself. This was a, uh, we've never had multiple reactors melt down before. We've never had fuel pools melt down that we know about that they emit to. And we've never had eight fuel pools melt down at one time and four reactors. And the number four reactors, one they say didn't melt down, they said they were doing maintenance, but they only remove a fraction of the fuel each time, one third, one quarter at best, right? And so the rest of the fuel would have been in the assemblies uh, attached in the reactor core itself. This wasn't shut down for a huge overhaul, this was just a normal fuel rotation. It melted down too. And the fuel pools were full of four to five to six reactor cores each day melted down to the common spent fuel pool had around 10 million pounds of reactor cores. They melted down. And so the Fisher story now is only 2.2 grams got out and that's only tritium. And you can't filter this kind of stuff. You can never change the filter. Maybe evidence of nuclear fission or the release of plutonium. Why is everything pixelated is a frightening question. And this is the drone is way back uh, and the sea is that way where the reactors are up in the top corner. Uh, over 500 microsieverts per hour at number two 100 millisieverts beyond a 30 kilometer radius. And and Dano shouldn't, should be in jail for the rest of his life with all the lies he told. Japanese government kept, kept the meltdown secret. And then this uh, spokesperson, National Institute of Safety Agency spokesman replaced after letting it slip out during a press conference. 
Why is everything pixelated so incredibly? That's towards the ocean. You look into the top of the picture. Broken, spent nuclear fuel rods may have been scattered from number three. Not may. My goodness, number three is completely... disintegrated. There's nothing left. That's number three over there. That should have been razzed all the way to the ground, right? Why is everything pixelated if there's nothing to worry about? What are they up to? My goodness. You can't, like, you can't work in that environment is, is the, one of the themes of tonight's presentation. Japan's government funded report MOX fuel particles were found 100 kilometers from Fukushima Plutonium-239 levels significantly enhanced after Reactor 3 explosion. And uh, Reactor 3 was the mixed oxide fuel. And plutonium was named after the devil. But the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods is going to be the curium isotopes. So when you zoom in, see the hole in the roof behind me? for instance, and down along the sea, let me move back a bit, because that's zoomed in a bit too much, but the tsunami, had, like the rest of the country, had wrecked the country, right? High radiation levels around the plant prevented the helicopters from dumping water on the spent fuel rods of Fukushima. So the helicopters couldn't go in there. How can a human go in there? And so the Fukushima 50 series documentary they have up on Netflix and other places uh, called The Day, was it? Is a complete fabrication of reality. There are, there are no Spider-Man, there are no Hulks, there are nobody with tolerance to the emissions we're talking about. There was nobody there. The helicopter couldn't even go there. How could you? The explosion at the Fukushima Unit 3 drove the nuclear fuel out of the storage pool and scattered it up to two miles away. That's why it's all pixelated, because uh, there's even more damage than we're aware of. Radiation around Fukushima, particularly Reactor 1 and 2, right? Because we got lots of pictures now of Reactor 3 and 4. We know for sure they're gone. Radiation around Fukushima nearing levels where humans vomit uncontrollably and hair could be stripped from the bodies. So that's, you're getting a lethal dose. You're dying shortly after that, and that's far away. At site, though, you're getting gamma shines, x-rays, neutron bombardments. You can't survive it. Plutonium uranium number three had been blown out. There was no, this was no ordinary explosion. And this is why everything is pixelated. Tokyo government finds 131 iodine levels up to quadruple the cesium levels in the water reclamation centers. And so the problem with that is your water filtration system now is permanently compromised with radiation. You can never drink the water again. They couldn't get rid of There's just one community had 50,000, and that was 2018 or something, 50,000 one-ton bags of sediment from the water filtration. Imagine having 50,000 one-ton pickup trucks, then you're kind of getting an idea of what we're talking about. And you got to control the keys to every one. So 50,000 one-ton bags of sediment, which means your water filtration and everybody who drank it got poisoned severely. And, and the reason that number makes sense is because of all the other documentation that we have on this... Um, Right, there's 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. And a lot of it would have had to do with that factor, right? The water was compromised, and that's permanent. Doctors want to ban um, thyroid cancer screening. A tsunami of thyroid cancer stopped the diagnosis. We need to actively discourage early detection. Judge has to, uh, Wall Street 
Bragg Journal, Judge rules nuclear reactors are causing thyroid cancers. There's 1,800 diseases and illnesses, not immune deficiencies and injuries. Your immune system is compromised on top of that, so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. And so, why is everything pixelated? It was a nuclear explosion of Fukushima Reactor 3, says the reactor designer. Plutonium scattered after the blasts. How come now nobody's talking about tritium in all of these original stories? High levels of radioactive material found in Tokyo in the sewage at 170,000 becquels a kilogram uh, that people are excreting. It's incredible contamination. Reactor 3, by the way, exploded a second time in the United Nations. 24 hours later, then the wind and the rain brought high levels of radiation over Tokyo, Sendai, Nagagno. And this is UN, who now denying they said that, and everything else they, that they had already acknowledged is now denied. Why is everything pixelated? That should terrify you that everything is pixelated. Highly radioactive sewage found 30 miles in the Fukushima plant. Cesium levels 334,000 becquels per kilogram. In sewage. And cesium only. They're going to be loaded with plutonium, loaded with uranium, loaded with americium, loaded with neptunium, loaded with a thousand different fission products attacking your immune system. That's why you see stuff like that, 865,000 extra cancers in just the first year. Cancer is just one of 1,800 diseases, by the way. Not everybody had health care. Not everybody had diagnosis. Not everybody knew they were sick at this point. This is just the first year. And they're not looking at all the other diseases, just cancer. Wake up, for goodness sakes, wake up. At least support me, for goodness sakes. We just missed an incredible amount of research, prime research, because we got so much stuff breaking down. Everything is, has been used so much. It's, got so, it's so old, been used so much. And I've done the maintenance, but you can't. It's hard use, right? We're talking about. I'm going to hunt in the ocean with a, a motor has been to Alaska six times that I've done it myself. And I'm out on the Atlantic Ocean with that same motor. That doesn't even work properly. It's a crazy story. It's so sad. It's, it's so disappointing. 100% release of Unit 4 nuclear spent fuel pool assumed in the, the non-regulatory analyst. And 50% of Reactor 3 So 100% of Reactor 4 in 2011, October the 7th. So they said there's 100% of the reactor fuel pools are gone in that building. Gee, I never noticed it. And only 50% of Reactor 3, but Reactor 3 is completely gone. And so is Reactor 4. And they should have razzed these things to the ground. There's nothing left. It's completely gone. And why is everything pixelated? Explosion heard near heavily damaged number four reactor. Heavily damaged. Well, it's a little bit more than heavily damaged. And when was that headline? Sorry. Oh, May the 31st, 2011. Well, they knew back then, right? The original footage, and I've showed it to you earlier. I could try to find it again. There you go. There's no way that anybody, and this was available to anybody that was writing these stories in the major medias. There's no way to know that he didn't know Reactor 4 and 3 were completely wrote, wrote off, gone. But they decided immediately, and there is no pictures of Reactor 4 exploding, by the way, even though they admit they have the videos. Did Fukushima Daiichi Unit 4 catch on fire today? Oh, no, no, have a look here. Yeah, yeah it caught on fire. And burned at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. 
So like reactor two is still, the building is still intact. That's because the fuel pool, the reactor core actually went down into the earth where they had uh, hydrovolcanic explosions in contact with water. It split the earth open in multiple places and that steam coming out of there was lethal doses. It was 10 sieverts per hour in six different places where the earth was split open. I got the original footage just coming up. Just bear with me. And we should be coming over to reactor five and six. Yeah, they're up in the top corner up there. Sharp rise in iodine levels at three Tokyo sewage plants. Iodine-131 detected in Tokyo at multiple locations at the garbage facilities, at the incinerators is too radioactive to get rid of the dust. The garbage is too radioactive to burn. The sediment from the water filtration is too radioactive to get rid of. The sewage is too radioactive, too radioactive to get rid of. How many, what do you really need to comprehend that we are in very, very, very danger? And the industry has no checks and balances. Now they're only claiming only 2.2 grams is all they got out of the buildings that don't exist anymore. When you're missing millions and millions of pounds per building. You can see that tank up there. We got some close up shot. But right down, right there, that's the, the cast storage, the dry storage. The water went right through it. The reactors are actually higher than that spot. And we have quite a lot. We have, I got six videos of just the 1900 pictures they released originally. We went through every single picture. And none of the pictures match up to the official story. Everything tells a, says no, no one can survive in the environment. Look at the damage to that tank. So you can see the water pressure so imagine what it actually done to the common spent fuel pool. So up in the top part of the screen, you're seeing reactor five and six. We'll get to that in a minute. 600 kilometers from Fukushima, the highest levels of cesium in Osaka Bay soil were catastrophic numbers. These are massive numbers, 600 kilometers away. In, in the sewage, in the soil, in the sediment off the bay floor. But officially now, they say nothing got out, only 2.2 grams of tritium. Here's five and six. And look what we're seeing up there, reactor five and six. The pump house is pixelated, the reactor is pixelated, and the stack is pixelated. Why is reactor six, reactor five is the closest one, this one here. He's not pixelated in none of the pictures, I don't think. But reactor six is completely blotched out, and so is the pump house. So you got reactor one, two, three, four, and six, and the common spent fuel pools. It's unprecedented. It's a bigger, re it's a bigger accident than all current, past, present, uh, nuclear meltdowns and accidents combined at the one place. It's a planet killer. That's why they're going through this enormous, irresponsible, hateful cover-up, disgusting betrayal, this hideous, monstrous betrayal. So react. why is reactor six pixelated out? Why is the stack pixelated out? Why is the pump house completely pixelated out? These are absurdly important questions that you're not gonna find anywhere else only right here. This is the only site we'll ever ask you that question. Tokyo began burning massive amounts of radioactive waste and it'll continue for 2.5 years. They're gonna grind up, and this is what they've been doing, grinding up the nuclear waste, taking it to Tokyo incinerators and burning it. There was a story about one, one incinerator that three people had heart attacks on the same day. And they're burning so much radiation that it'll cause you heart attacks right away. And there's 36 million people in that 
metropolitan area. A machinery reporter, seeing the mountains of radioactive waste Yokohama, I felt the ominous weight of the nuclear crisis, which has seen a distant affair to me until then. Now it's a distant affair and everything is pixelated when you zoom in. And they're not doing that because it's harmless. They're not going to do that for tritium. The sewage is too radioactive to get rid of. They're dumping the waste into Tokyo Bay. It's shocking how much actually landed in Tokyo, folks. I believe that's the administration building up right there. Yeah, this reactor one. Yeah, that's the administration building up right there. And that's a nuclear wasteland too. Look at the dead. That that wasn't a tsunami. That was the blast on that. It's too high and too far away, right? So it had to be for the tsunami to get to that spot. That's the blast. It was felt, reactor three blast was felt 25 miles away. High radiation levels near Tokyo was linked to Fukushima rain. It caused 29 million becquerels a square meter in soil, says the government. Almost double the last government's test. 70% of the children in Kanto, a region that includes Tokyo, have radioactive cesium in their urine. Why is everything pixelated? We got nothing to hide. Government claims strontium in Yokohama are not from Fukushima because no short lived strontium 89. Yet they found 59 becquerels a kilogram of strontium 89. And so to suggest that Fukushima didn't impact the country anywhere is, lo is insane. Iodine 131 report in Tokyo 10 of the 12 sewage plants test positive. But uh, Yokohama says it's not from Fukushima. 80% of the residents tested a radioactive iodine in the thyroid, 87,000 microsieverts. <laughs> That's why there's only uh, 865,000 cancers. Dan's not too bad. And filthy animals. Well, actually, animals are clean compared to these people. They're not really people, are they? They don't, certainly don't have any of the attributes of people. Some residents face potential health risks from exposures. Potential! At 87,000 microsieverts. Potential! We should just get rid of journalism. It doesn't exist. It did back for the first couple of years, though. Then they bought them all up and traded them out for scum, and there's no shortage of them, apparently. That's the administration building. Blew all the windows here, look at that. Wow. That's reactor six. And, and um, the pump house. Look at all the debris underground. It's so hard to find out, right? Because it's pixelated, you can't really say much. But you kind of do get a little better view of the plant. Let me zoom. The reactor five looks fine. Who knows what they're up to? There was definitely some kind of meltdown at reactor six. There's no other reason to do that. US government kept the worst case Fukushima scenario secret from the public. Possibility of radiation exceeding safe levels of for thyroid doses in Alaska. Possibility. In Alaska. Let me go back to that one. In Alaska. Not possible, guaranteed. And which means all the children are producing radioactive hormones, which you name it, you can create that... Um, illness because they're saturated, all that radioactive hormones you're producing on top of it. It's a very important function of your body is your thyroid. 
Red heart for iodine found in 50% of the children's thyroids, up to 35 millisievers, 35,000 microsievers. These are stunning numbers. And also, nobody's talking about tritium when you really talk about the subject. Japan's uh, radioactive children will be fine, says degenerate new scientists. Thyroid glands only emitting 35 um, millisievers, 35,000 microsievers, suggesting under 100 millisievers is not dangerous. Because the standard that the International Atomic Energy Agency is using is based on natural, not man made. Try wrapping your mind around that statement. And for new, we got a whole folder on new scientists. It's, what they've done is disgusting. It's despicable. It's ruthless. It's just incredibly hateful. They have no attributes of a human whatsoever. The only thing they pixelated was the reactors, around the reactors. Everything else was fine. New stu a study claims Tokyo newborns had safe uh, 1,140 microsievert thyroid doses only counted food and water and didn't include the inhaled reactivity, rea uh, radioactivity. And, uh, did not include the first 10 days when iodines and other short-lived isotopes had peaked. Well, significantly, the, num the, significant, the scenario and the numbers are significantly different from what they're saying, by the way. It's infinitely worse. Um, there's the new scientist study. I got really dirty my fingertips when I'm touching it. I got two folders on it, actually. Hang on here. It's ridiculous how much stuff I got. It's not a legal poison. Your Congress, the diet in Japan, the parliaments in, in Canada and the United Kingdom and Australia don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you. Let me do this again, one second. I'm just going to blast through for context for everybody of just a fraction of the things you might want to consider when you're thinking about radiation fallout. Going goes like this. So you got transfers of cesium. When you hear cesium, and they're talking about other isotopes, from flowers to honey and pollen. So right away they're, they're suggesting that the pollinators, the moths, the butterflies, the bees and that are in real dire straits in that environment by saying that, right? Radio contamination data collected in Italy following Chernobyl. Agricultural countermeasures taken into Chernobyl where he allegedly said if you put potassium in the farmer's field, the plants wouldn't suck up cesium. They're crazy. That's the literally literally the most insane statement imaginable, and we see it constantly in studies. Chernobyl fallout in BC, the variability of Chernobyl and retention of water columns at lakes in the English Lake District two years and four years after disposition. Long-range transport of uh, isotopes from Fukushima to southern Poland. Transports of iodine to the grass, cow, milk, and the U.S. dairies following Chernobyl. There's all these studies they had done, not because they were bored, not because they had endless money, because they were looking for what the real numbers were going to be. Aspect environmental monitoring because of British uh, nuclear fuel following Chernobyl. British nuclear fuel is despicable. They're despicable what they've done. What they've done at Donner Ray and Sellafield in the UK is that dis that's despicable, man. Plutonium 239, 230, 240, 238, 
90 strati and 137 cgm. Concentrations in the surface here in Austria due to dispersion of Chernobyl, which is maybe at best a 100 of Fukushima, if you're being generous. And, Fuk and Chernobyl was fucking brutal. Excuse the language. Contamination of food in Czechoslovakia by Chernobyl. In Shakespeare Bay, they, they used depleted uranium out there for the military for years. It's, un it's unreal how evil the nuclear industry actually is in every facet of it, too. Pregnancy outcome in Sweden after Chernobyl. Why are you looking at that? Contamination of Austrian soil with cesium-137. Yeah, but the reactors run on plutonium and uranium, and the biggest byproducts are going to be curium isotopes, not cesium, which is a British terminology, and cesium-137 perch in the Swedish lakes after Chernobyl. Sweden actually closed down the freshwater fishery for 30 years. Right, they opened it up again for commercial fishing in the freshwater lakes on the 30th anniversary of Chernobyl. Because after Fukushima, they were like, the hell with it. Transport of cesium, americium, 241 decays of plutonium, 231, by the way, and plutonium isotopes in the lagoons in the Baltic Sea. And take notice of sometimes of the amount of people that are getting paydays from writing those studies. You start appreciating the bigger picture. Chernobyl followed in Finland, hot areas, hot areas, hot areas in Finland, hot areas of radioactive fire. That's the craziest statement imaginable. They're alluding to a huge amount of a dangerous amounts in areas. Long-term variations of post-Chernobyl strontium, cesium, plutoniums, concentrations in the air, disposition to the ground, resuspension factors, forest fires will liberate huge amounts of radioactive uh, isotopes that have been sequestered in your trees and your meadows and your lands. Because, you know, the nuclear weapons testing actually happened. And it wasn't testing, it was a nuclear war. It's the same weapons, the same radioactive fallout. Thyroid radiation doses in Britain are rising from the Chernobyl. Well, first off, Chernobyl, uh, Britain had a, a mixed oxide meltdown in 1959. They're still hemorrhaging 8 million liters a day into the Atlantic Ocean. And they got away with it. So why shouldn't Chernobyl is what they're thinking, see? But Chernobyl is a thousand um, cellar fields in inventory because they were using um, uh, graphite in those reactors, the same as Chernobyl. It's still terrible accidents. They ain't nothing compared to Chir uh, Fukushima. They got nothing on Fukushima. And they're vicious what they've done. Iodine 131 other rated nuclear environmental samples collected from Ibaragi, Japan, from the Chernobyl. Thyroid doses in Britain after Chernobyl, which was directly a, a result of Sellafield, right? Because it's done in Crumbia, which is right alongside of the nuclear meltdown, for God's sakes. Dry and wet, so never waste a crisis, you know. Dry and wet disposition, Chernobyl aerosol in southern Finland. Transfer of cesium to reindeer meat. They still can't eat the reindeer in Lapia 36 years later, 37 years later. Uptake of radionuclides by plants after Chernobyl. So even your pharmaceuticals, which is a lot of plants, are going to be radioactive pharmaceuticals from here on out. Changes in thyroid cancer incidences in Scotland post Chernobyl and Sellafield and Donneray. Donneray's in Scotland, by the way. It's going to be 300 years before you clean that spot up. So imagine how bad Scotland really is. Radio cesium aquatic invertebrates, Norway after Chernobyl. So when you see all these different studies, I have a folder there with 1,900 studies on Chernobyl. That one of these days is just going to shoot the whole day, do the whole thing, and you'll see it's bizarre, all these things they're studying of Chernobyl worldwide. All these facets, all these details, these minutiae, these, these fine insight into... And so ionizing radiation, human gender proportions at birth. So what they call sex ratio studies, where they'll look for more males than females. Propagation of Chernobyl 131 iodine impulse through the air, grass, animal, milk, 
in Greece, sexual dysfunction in Chernobyl patients, radioactivity in breast milk after Chernobyl, transport of radioactive fallout from air to cow milk produced in Northwest Italian farms following Chernobyl, disposition of Chernobyl fallout in Northern Italy, disposition of fallout in the water system of the Alps, the pre-Alpine lakes in France, Analysts of radioactivity levels in soil and crops from Campanian reached in southern Italy. Anthropogenic cesium on atmospheric aerosols in Slovakia and around nuclear power plants in Slovakia. All nuclear power plants are hemorrhaging radiation into the environment. That's why they're surrounded by farms. This industry it's really something special when it comes to evil. I've seen lots of sadistic stuff, and I'm sure some of you have too. You've read the stories or seen it in the media, but nothing touches the nuclear industry. We should just empty all the jails and fill them up with people from the nuclear industry. Geographical analysts of thyroid cancers, young people from northern England. Evidence of a sustained excess in females in Crumbia. Crumbia is right alongside a cellar field. It's ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns. I got a picture of cellar field, I believe, this picture. And cellar field, of course, yes, cellar field. Surrounded by farms. Why is it surrounded by farms? Why did they need to surround it by farms? What could possibly be the excuse that almost every single nuclear power plant on the entire planet is surrounded by farms? The only thing that makes sense is that's how they're poisoning you. This was well thought out, well organized, well articulated assault on you at your supermarkets and your friends and your families and your loved ones. And you know, because when you look at all the studies, of, um, like say this one's on tomato plants, how it sucks up cesium and 85 strontium, 65 zirconium, and almost every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms, when that's the very last spot you should have a farm. Child's risk of cancer from radiation is actually thousands of times higher than an adult, but it's even worse again because they're developing and so you're mutating them stem cells. That's, that's, misery for the rest of their life. Why are all nuclear power plants surrounded by farms? That, that's the question that you better get a grip on because they're murdering everybody everywhere all the time. There's over 400 of these nuclear power plants worldwide and almost every one of them is surrounded by farms. And they know that low doses of radiation causes heart diseases and strokes. And when you look at the fallout from Chernobyl, and here they are now, because you never held them accountable, the official story is none of the things I showed you happened, and only 2.2 grams was emitted from the buildings that don't even exist anymore. And don't worry, because that's in tanks. So that's ruthlessness. That's contempt for you and the 8 million species. And sitting in silence should never be an option under any circumstances. Radiation health specialists, children with 11 barrels a kilogram of cesium start to see heart problems. You can put 200 million Beckwells on the head of a needle atoms that are pulsing a Beckwell every second. You can't see that, 200 million. So take 11 of them and try to, like you got 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, you can't see it. 11 of them cause permanent harm to the children. So why are nuclear power plants surrounded by fucking farms? And just one hot particle can cause a cancer and everything from a nuclear meltdown is a cancer. And there's 1,800 diseases that supplement it while you wait for the cancer to show up. Might take you out before that. The influence and development temporary fruit tree species for the potential uptake of radionuclides. So why are they surrounded by these things? 50 becquels a kilogram in humans lead to irreversible lesion of vital organs. So imagine 200 million atoms, becquels, on the head of a needle. 200 million atoms is pulsing 200 million becquels a second to each pulsing, maybe even more, but at least one. So therefore, if you've got 200 million atoms ahead of a needle and you can't see it, you take 50 of them out, you can't possibly see that. 
How can you perceive that you consumed it? Because you better get this right. You're not going to get another chance. There's no cures for this. So you need to, it's time to stop it. And there's nobody else on the planet that's going to be telling you that, unfortunately. Terrifyingly, horrifyingly, disturbingly. Why are they surrounded by farms? And that's the question. You better start asking them and your loved ones. Before Fukushima, 100 becquerels of cesium is nuclear waste. You put 200 million head, atoms in the head and needle, you can't see it. Take 100 of them. It's not very much, is it? That's nuclear waste. It's a billion times, two billion times more toxic than industrial poisons. Why it has that particular attribute right there. But after it, they made it safe to eat, but they're not checking. And cesium is the very last one you're worried about anyway. You're worried about uranium, plutonium. The biggest byproduct of the fuel rods is the curium isotopes, which are probably 20 times worse than the plutonium isotopes, which are named after the devil. 50 becquels in humans, adults, lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organs. What do you think that means? Ask your doctor what irreversible lesions in your vital organs means next time you're there. Where'd all the nuclear power plants that are hemorrhaging radiation from the fuel pools 24 hours a day? And I'm like hammer, hemorrhaging, I can't come up with a stronger word, unfortunately. This doesn't do it justice. Do you think it's an accident that almost every single nuclear plant on the planet is surrounded by farms? Do you think the whole world should be aware of that? Do you think the whole world should have that conversation or at least be aware of it? If you do, you should support me. You should make me strong. You should give me the ability to speak louder, to fight back, to do the research. You really should. You're not going to get the opportunity again. I can guarantee you, nobody is going to fill in this gap. And so therefore, I should be given the opportunity. And you have no idea how efficient and effective I can be. You really don't if you set me free. If you set me free, I will change the world for the better for you and everybody else in the species. We're all in this big picture, and we deserve a say in our future. And we are denied a future right now. It's time to clap back. There's no way they don't know this is bad grown food right alongside of nuclear disasters. These, and the only way you can describe a nuclear power plant is as a disease factory because they're hemorrhaging radiation to the environment 24 hours a day. And nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. So why is it surrounded by farms? Smalley mascot asked Fukushima kids to gargle to stay safe from radiation and radioactive sparkles on happy children. So why are all of these places, when it's so dangerous and such a tiny amount surrounded by farms, when the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation in the environment, why was the food, why are they growing food right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation surrounded by 14 prefectures that are banned by 55 countries for a decade in a nuclear wasteland? That's one-ton bags of radiation. They're harvesting food in a ghost town for sale. They're so heartless. This is why they're growing food everywhere alongside the nuclear reactors. It's because they're exterminating you. And you've got to make a stand. The, bit, the other thing that's saving them right now is I don't have the support. I don't have the ability to do the things that need to get done. And so I do what I can do. I should be out on the research on the ocean or have someone out there researching on the ocean every day the weather allows it. And we have the operation to do it. I built the operation, but we don't have the ability to fund it. It's horrifying. I apologize for caring and wanting and trying. And I've been doing this for, it seems forever, certainly since Fukushima, and I was at it a decade before that. Why are these places surrounded by farms when they're hemorrhaging radiation from the fuel pools? And this doesn't even do it justice. Think of what you're seeing as fallout from the fuel pools every day, but it's worse than that. By the way, CC immediately damaged the heart muscles. Not, a, not just you, not just me, but the birds and the insects, the mammals and the animals and, and the species and the ecosystem, the biota itself. We are wrecking everything. And pretending we're not is not sustainable. It's not tenable. We're obligated. This is our obligation. This is our watch. 
we should take it serious, right? Malnutrition, vertical soil transfer by tree root. But of course, if you find the cesium-137, there's 100 times more strontium-90. It's relentless amount of curium and uranium and plutonium because that's what the act reactors are running on. You're skirting the reality when you call it cesium or iodine. But they've been doing it for 80 years. They're, that's what they do. They can't get money from, not many of them get money for anything else. It's just the song and dance. Don't be fooled by pay industry consultants. Don't believe anything in the nuclear industry. And, you know, there's 500 presentations on this site of news cycles, 24-hour news cycles, and that quantifies my assertions a million times over. We methodically, methodically, forensically investigated their narratives and found it to be um, a genocidal, omnicidal machine. Potatoes. Why? Well, I can't even eat potatoes anymore. And you know it because they've done all these studies, right? They've got all these studies in the meadows. So why are they growing food around all the nuclear disease factories worldwide? Because you shouldn't call them nuclear power plants. You should call them nuclear disease factories because that's what they are. 16,000 workers ran away from Fukushima because of tritium, Dana? No, man. Because it's fucking nuclear meltdowns. And a million becquels on the west coast per square meter of xenon 133. And 20 million particles of iodine 120, 131 per liter sustained the radioactive fallout. You had another study of 220 million atoms per liter in Ottawa, Canada. That lives for 29 million years, or 15 million years, half-lives, 150 million years. And that's enough to wreck your DNA and your chromosomes and saturate your thyroids of all the species, including you. And even, like, again, it's hard to comprehend why almost every single nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms. You've been warned. And we can keep going on all the studies. It's ridiculous. When you start looking at everything they're studying, then you should really consider, reconsider having this on your planet. It's, there's nothing more important than stopping this omnicidal industry, which is exterminating all species. The flora, the fauna, the biodiversity. The, the whales are showing up emaciated worldwide. The birds are showing up emaciated worldwide. The insects are disappearing. And it's happening in increments, so you don't really notice. There ah, never was that many birds. There never was that many insects. There never was that many whales. There never was... You'll, you'll give yourself excuses because they'll give it to you. If you look at all the studies, then you can appreciate how many facets of your life this has compromised and, and, the, bio, and the health of the planet itself is now compromised. The oxygen production of the planet is now non-tenable, non-sustainable. And I, I can bombard you with thousands of images of documentation. And I do sometimes, right? It's hard to comprehend it because it's you almost got to develop your own language to tell the story because it's so hideous, it's so monstrous. It's so, uh, but you got to deal with it. Right, you can't just pretend that this never happened, it doesn't exist and had no adverse side effects and there's only tritium and the list goes on because you are making a mistake that is catastrophic to everything you care about. This affects every facet of every species. And so we have to have a voice, we have to have a part, part in the conversation. And because we haven't been able to, they have become very dangerous. You know, and it's so sadistic and twisted, they actually changed, they actually changed They actually changed 
So Wall Street Journal reported, the Wall Street rig, officials sharply raised radiation levels for victims to get iodine pills after the meltdown to 70 times higher than the UN did, which are, which are batshit lunatics themselves. So how evil was Japan to do that? And there was a study came out in 2019 from Japan. I screwed that up today. Newborn heart problems surged after Fukushima, says the study. And they needed, there was 14.2% increase in the number of operations per 100,000 live births for congenital malformation, neonates, and infants. So, which works out to 14,200 children per 100,000 live births needed open heart surgery because of radiation. And we'll just let it go there. Now 100,000 Fukushima killed children with thyroid problems. So if you radiate the thyroid, you're producing massive radioactive hormones. And that, that leads to absurd amount of illnesses and diseases, not immune deficiencies and injuries and illnesses over their lifetime. And pre-nuclear meltdown, um, I'll find it for you. was one in a million children had thyroid tumors. The tumors they're talking about are two centimeters, but the thyroid is only three by five centimeters. But there's clear evidence rates have risen. Before the disaster in 2011, the rate of thyroid cancer was between one and two cases in every million children. Now, with about 200,000 children screened so far, so now it's 35, 358,000 out of a million, 13,646 out of 38,000 is 35.8%. So in a million is 358,000 out of a million. We have uh, tumors of two centimeters at least. And, which, and your thyroid glands are, two, are three by five. And so for that to happen, you also mean the thyroid is completely saturated with anthropogenic man-made isotopes, which means you're producing radioactive hormones. And so that means your pituitary gland, which stores a lot of very significant hormones, are completely compromised. You got 14,200 children with open heart surgery, yet six out of 10 children with diabetes. You really think you can escape this? by pretending it's not happening, you can't, right? And we can't pretend it didn't happen because that's what they're doing. That's not a way for it, and they're vicious about it. Not only that's been growing food alongside these disease factors for 80 years. When do we say no? When, when, what, what is it gonna take for us to say no? <laughs> I'm just asking. Okay, that's all I got, I guess. That's basically all I got. I can show you all these pictures, but we usually went through tons of them, right? I can show you all the headlines. We can sh I can show you tons of it, right? All the pixelated pictures and the stuff that we're able to actually see. See the pixels there, but now you can get a little clear glimpses. But, but the majority of it is pixelated out. Why are they pixelating everything out? And that's the common spin fuel. But look, everything piled up, see? Or you get these little glimpses sometimes in some of the angles where they didn't pixelate it perfectly. It's frightening. And this uh, radioactive black dust striking Tokyo and metropolitan area and it's everywhere in the city is five to 10 million becquels per kilogram we're talking about. Tokyo had the third highest levels of all testing locations. Uh, they're just their fog is at 4,000 becquels per kilogram, just gammas. It never disappears. 
And even the dust indoors at 1,700 becquerels a kilogram. These are catastrophic numbers. Why is everything pixelated? A million becquerels per kilogram after decontamination at a school. 70 miles away. Plutonium detected in the black substances. A lot of the radiation is so high levels, you can't detect cesium, for goodness sakes, because of the betas and, and the alphas are so high. And the same thing with tritium, you can't actually detect tritium at Fukushima, because you, your signals from plutonium, uranium, curium, everything else is so high, it drowns out the weak but dangerous tritium. Tritium is the cover story. The pixelated pictures are the cover story. And all of these pictures, I'm zoomed in, but when you're not zoomed in, you'll never realize that's actually what's happening. That's it, that's all I got. That's what I got for tonight, for Wednesday, um, uh, September the 6th. Can't remember the date. Have a great night, great day tomorrow. Have a great day tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last show of the week, day five, with this new format. Because they won't let me stream, they hacked. Either YouTube and Rumble has condoned it or we've been hacked. We can't live stream after a decade of live streaming. That coincided with the alleged 24 dumping, which has been going on for 12 years. There is nothing in the tanks, the tanks are empty. If you see my playlist, you're going to see the videos with the documentations, quantify those assertions. I'm here to fight for you. I'm here to go to war for you every day, whether you like it or not. I am here fighting for your future and your loved ones and everybody else's, and eight million species. So join me. Buy a Calm Down Charlie t-shirt at least. you find links below at the bottom of my description for t-shirts at my nuclear merchandise store, which is non-profit. It's just to sell the shirts and get the conversation started. And you can donate to help fund this rare, rare journalism where we tell the truth. Have a great night. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Hugs for everybody.